welcome to our English class. I'm Phil. We have rejoined me today as we talk and talk on a captivating journey into the world of literature. In this video, I'm diving into the version of the third professional novel cover for Christmas and the story is the hand relevant in Phil's world. As we check in the pages of our diplomatic visit, I will uncover not only the intriguing characters and the engaging stuff, but also the underlying things that we can make into the fabric of our society. Habits of Nation isn't just a story. It's a mirror reflecting the complexities of human relationships, their practice of identity, the dynamics of their different and so on. Through this analysis, I'll connect the dots between the narratives and our own lives, exploring how the game is explored in the book called Significance in our overthinking world. Whether you are an avid reader, a student, or extremely curious about literature, so what you should like a new experience, um, this video is for you. So grab your favorite favorite book, prepare to be engaged and make a piece of medical journey, but so what you need to do is to be Because we all know that this uh, is a novel, the father of the is a novel, and uh, it is because of uh, several characters, and it was written by Paul B. Wilson. Now, when we look at this particular book, uh, it, is, uh, it is a novel that is satirical in nature, and we all know that it is set in contemporary Africa. And it is a story that brings to the readers all that has gone wrong in African countries, but in Ayumira's way through its characters. Now, Africa as a continent in this book is depicted as a valuable place that lacks a sense and that lacks sense of direction. And many of the leaders in our, this country, our, this continent, Africa, have made their peoples, our voices, rendering them silent as uh, they continuously continue uh, to destroy their livelihood. We'll also learn that the, uh, the plot of this novel revolves around the lives of four men. And as the storyline begins, we will learn that there were four men who checked in at the Samand Hotel in Bajul one evening. And these four men, to, uh, just to mention but a few, we have Professor Kimani uh, from Kenya. We have also uh, uh, another man who checked in as Gombile Melusi and the rest too. And now these four men are, are from different parts of Africa. And we are told that amid their various misfortunes, these men get together to try and make a change. They want the African heads of states to ratify a document that could transform uh, the continent's economic fortunes. And these four men have really suffered under uh, widely political systems in their respective countries. And each of them bears a grudge against the system and has a reason for wanting it to change. And they represent the values of humanity, the values of empathy and vulnerability uh, among the Africans now. The title of this book, Fathers of Nations, what is it and what does it mean? Now this is uh, this title, Fathers of Nations, is very relevant and and it is so apt for it socializes the situations in the contemporary African society. Fathers of Nations is um, a title given to a person considered uh, the driving force behind the establishment of a country or a nation. And these fingers in the African context who once helped to drive away the colonial regime uh, and helped their countries gain self-rule under their, uh, their leadership. Now, Fathers of Nations is uh, uh, basically the heads of states or the heads of governments or simply the presidents in African countries. Now, this title is satirical. In the text, 50 fathers of nations, uh, we have been told, 
uh, titled Heads of State have met in Bajo in Gambia, and the agenda of the summit is not very clear. And this discussion thereafter has neither head nor tail. And two rival groups, of course, uh, as we go through the book, we're going to learn that we have two rival groups, uh, that is Path Halfa and another uh, group advancing its way, Omega. And they debate, um, they debate and their debate seem, uh, seems to have no direction. And thus, what comes to, uh, to the fore is that the agenda for the Africa is stated uh, and is set and dictated by the international financial institutions that continue to impoverish the continent. And through fathers, uh, those are the presidents. So, the, so though the presidents are expected to give direction, they are also expected to provide agenda to give a uh, 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 proper leadership and guidance to their children or to the people of their countries who in this context are their respective nations and uh, states. Now, now this book uh, written by Paul P. Fita uh, who is the author uh, of course I've said that uh, he had two ideological uh, standpoints uh, that is uh, Path Holfer and Way Omega. And the novel therefore talks about the dysfunctional uh, post colonial state that is simply the main thing uh, that is the dis uh, functional post colonial state of African states indeed. And in, uh, it pictures millions of people on their naive's age of daily survival. Some countries are bisect by wars and organized criminal networks that control all the political power and economic opportunities of their countries. Now we also have international corruption uh, uh, coming into a center page of this uh, novel. And now the author Paul B. Vita asserts that what we have in Africa are not nations but states. It goes further to give distinction between the two. The crisis, uh, when he gives an example in the crisis in the Zimbabwe uh, to Nigeria, ethnic divine to the tragedy of the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, the book uh, reveals the true tragedy of Africa by World Financial Institution. And so the novel shows the way African countries have sunk down on abusive uh, on poverty and again the book is also set in Africa and it is Africa where uh, learned people are impoverished and they are, they are also made beggars and this is a society that does not value knowledge but cherish ignorance. Now we could also look at the plot of this book, the plot summary in brief and we've said that <coughs> fathers of nations I use satire, uses sarcasm through humor to enlighten the reader on the social, economic, and political wrongs in African states. And the continent Africa is still struggling with post independent problems like poverty, like ignorance, diseases. And instead of solving the same problems, the states have new entrants which are equally retrogressive to the inhabitants of African nations that could be corruption, impunity, and many more. And so the continent is hence depicted as having lost sense of direction and moral correctness. Now this plot of this book, uh, Fathers of Nation, of course we know it revolves around the lives of four men from different parts of Africa as we began with and these four men are to name uh, them Professor Kemani, we have our comrade, uh, comrade Melusi, Engineer Tahir and Pastor Chiamaka. They want uh, the African heads of state in a summit to ratify and adopt the document that could transform the continent's economic structures. The above stated four men we learned that from the book they have initially suffered in different ways under the, their current political system in their respective countries. And this makes each and every one of them to hold a grudge against the same systems that affected them and hence starts to press for a possible change. We also meet one Dr. Abiola Aflabi, 
and we have we learned that as we go ahead we are going to learn that he was married to one Pamela um, his wife was American Professor Kimani is from Kenya we also learned that he lost his wife that is Asiya to a former university colleague now a political a politician by the name Niwon Walomu and we also learned that he also have a uh, has a daughter Tony who dies in a fatal accident Pastor Chiamaka is a fierce man who is jailed irregularly and also deterred from preaching. And finally, we have that, uh, the fourth man, uh, Gobile Melusi, a big-time politician, and he serves in the hands of the new head of state. He also loses his wife, Lisa, in a massacre. And we also learned that his Debele people are ruthlessly suppressed and murdered by the head of state's direct order. And in addition to the four men, we have uh, engineer Sehiv Tahir, who is a nuclear bomb expert, uh, Mr. Vaudia's long way, are uh, also dissatisfied with the African leadership. They are assisted by uh, VOA journalist, that is Fiona McKenzie and Nicholas Sentel, who in one accord plan to front their agenda before the AIDS of summit held in Gabia's capital of Bajul. Now, that summit, we have that summit that uh, takes place uh, for the heads of state. We are, we are told that it is planned to take place in Bajul, the capital of uh, uh, Gambia, and 50 of heads of state are invited, including the Gambian head of state, who is supposed to be the chair of the summit. But we learn that he passes it on to another president. The heads of state are assembled and accommodated the Pinnacle Hotel with the entourage. They look forward to readapt the way Omega ideology, which advocates for a common growth strategy of the citizens, which will enable the donors to continue supporting African nations through aids and grants. Now, the ideology is founded by Minister Zinto. We are coming uh, to see Zinto in a chapter later in the book, who claims that the strategy was well uh, thought out uh, it was well thought by experts. The majority of the African heads of state seem to be aged and have overstayed in power. Like a good example, we can give our Professor Dida uh, Bagaura, who is depicted as a senile. Bibon Diposo, who is also who has also ruled like for forty for forty years. We find this like in page one fifty seven. We have King Jemba. Uh, who was a king for life. We have our president Wasi Wasi who had committed all sorts of atrocities including uh, othering many coups and so many others. Now that is the book and it's, as it comes to an end we also uh, uh, want to analyze that Path Alpha uh, is a counter ideology emanating from a uh, Agency for government for Governance and Development in Africa, which was uh, championed by Mr. Thaudia Longwe. We all know him as Longwe, commonly from the book, and it defines its way to the heads of state summit. Mr. Longwe mobilizes the likes of Professor Kimani, Kobun Ibolusi, Pastor Chamaka, Dr. Falabi, and uh, Engineer Tahir to use the trick to enable the ideology before the summit to counter the way Omega. And we also learned that Fat Alpha is a strategy that advocates for mobilizing civic or public discontent into will to change. And this strategy uh, is made to solve the problems some presidents, uh, present heads of state, find it difficult to solve. They, uh, the advocates for uh, Fat Alpha champion the strategy because they want to solve the problems and owing to the fact that they have also suffered the ugly state abuse and do not want to suffer anymore. And as the book comes to a close and the summit comes to a close uh, in an, an uh, we can say, unprecedented way by Fathers of Nations setting up a committee to bring the matter into conclusion. And the committee set, the committee set is given the name, the method committee which is shared uh, by President Bogora who seems to be terribly confused because of senility. He uses two ways uh, to make decisions on which strategy to be ratified either. Uh, he gives the two of them the simple matrix by uh, ethos 
of a coin and the choice matrix and ultimately either way the path alpha carries the day meaning the common citizens win now that is just a simple uh plot summary or wanting to know what this book is all about begin before we begin a chapter by chapter analysis now uh we have uh, gone through uh the chapter uh the plot summary we have talked about the title of the book and we, as we come to the end of our discussion on the introduction and the relevance of fathers of nations i hope you have gained valuable insights into the world of this captivating novel um we haven't explored the themes the characters and the deep connections uh, they draw to our lives and society but that we are going to do is we do chapter by chapter analysis remember literature has a unique ability to ignite our imagination to pro uh, provoke thought and foster meaningful conversation i encourage you to delve further into the pages of fathers of nations and continue exploring the rich tapestry of human experiences it offers if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more enlightening content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you for being part of English Plex, where we celebrate the beauty and power of literature and English. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring.